Come on up. Hello, everybody. Thanks for stopping by the channel. It's uh, Chuck and my good buddy Howie here. You know, it's a little film time. Okay. We're going to go in the house. All right. All right. Go on. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Down. Down. Okay. Down. Down. I know you want some love. Okay. Hey, guys. Thanks for stopping by the channel. As you can see, uh, my shop's pretty clean. My son's got his car in here to do some work on it. And uh, this guy wants some love. Okay, well, let's get to this video. This is a sponsored video by Banggood. Uh, they sent me a product that I'm going to uh, show. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm going to show you what not to do with the product. Um, I, wanna, I would like to blame Bozo, but I think I'll just call it plain stupid right here. Um, also, uh, I haven't finished producing the video at this point. I've done some uh, review in the uh, first uh, portion of it. Um, I filmed it and I forgot to turn on the microphone. And uh, to add, add to worse, worse item than that is I moved on. For some reason, I pressed a button on the GoPro. And when I was hitting uh, video to video myself, uh, I ended up with snapshots. Um, so I'm going to do my best to uh, voice over and uh, I hope you enjoy and uh, we'll maybe have a little discussion here at the end of the video. Again, thanks for stopping by and I uh, hope you enjoy the video and the review of the product. And also, it's, uh, the, my review of this product is honest. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, although I could sign up and get a kick if somebody bought one of the products, I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm just product that I wanted to get and uh, use in the shop here. Take care. Well, as I mentioned, I had forgotten to turn on the microphone, so this is a voiceover showing you the packaging that the uh, units were delivered in. Two plastic bags uh, and the box was inside the two plastic bags. And there's the box. You can see it's a little bit uh, beat up from the shipping and the product inside was jumbled around. Uh, nothing was lost um, but uh, not the greatest uh, packaging job. Um, I think even one of the cutters uh, is down below the box if I remember correctly. Now these are metric so I did a little spreadsheet to show the um, decimal equivalent from millimeters to decimal and then a rough approximation to inches. Um, that's going to help me. I'm not a great uh, great person with millimeters and uh, I might even write on top of the the units themselves, the inch uh, equivalent, just to make it simpler for myself. Uh, and do the same thing on the uh, cases if I keep the tooling in the cases. The bottom there, the 90, um, I don't know why that's on their spec sheet. I couldn't figure that one out. But I think the uh, spreadsheet will definitely be handy. You can see the largest unit there is uh, almost 4 inches. Um, pretty good size. The uh, it's a 3 8 shaft uh, and it's got the three flats for a drill chuck. So uh, moving on from here, uh, let's see, I can't remember what else I'm discussing there as I'm chatting away on my spreadsheet, um, but we will be moving on. Here's the uh, actual containers. Uh, all of the tools did arrive. Nothing was lost in the packaging. Um, and the containers actually are marked also with the uh, diameter of the uh, cutter. And uh, you can see a cutter inside. The cutters have uh, an injection spring to uh, push the piece out. Um, those can tend to fall off uh, actually as it ejects the part. Um, but uh, there is the... Um, all of the different various tooling. And again, I don't know what I'm chatting about. I've got something to tell you there. So I'm going to select a couple of uh, units to do some sample drilling for you. 
hole cutting and uh, I picked one that was roughly about an inch uh, and then the other one I think is going to be around uh, two and a half inches if I recall. So uh, we'll take them uh, over to the drill press and uh, we'll get uh, started on it. Okay, over at the drill press, I've got a piece of uh, quarter inch plate in the uh, float lock vise. Um, I've uh, talking about feeds and speeds here. So one, basically a one inch diameter hole saw. Um, if you look at a drill chart for a one inch drill in steel, uh, it should run around over 400 RPM. So we're going to give it a shot here, starting at. Uh, at uh, 400 RPM and um, it really works well for the pilot drill of course the pilot drill is much smaller and it needs the speed um, to uh, penetrate the plate there um, I'm chatting away to you I don't know what I'm talking about there which since the microphone's not on uh, let's uh, let's get started here and get the drill going okay Got the drill fired up. We're running somewhere in the 400 RPM range and uh, start drilling. Now once once the pilot gets through, um, to me it sounded like it was a little bit too fast for the cutter uh, once it engaged the plate. And uh, I got a little singing there and uh, I opted to You'll see here, I'm just starting to engage and a little smoke and just seems fast to me. Um, so my drill press has the ability to uh, shift uh, high-low range. So I'm going to shift it into the low range here. And uh, it'll go as slow as 51 RPM. Um, so now we're on a slower RPM and you can see that the uh, hole cutter is engaged and starting to cut. Now I have to tell you, I, like I said, I wanted to blame it on Bozo, but it's uh, a little bit of stupid here. Um, it's cutting, seems to be cutting well, and I did not pay attention to what was taking place. Basically you have saw blades there. Uh, and the, as you can see there, it's cutting very, very, very well, and uh, it's progressing. Well, what I didn't pay attention to, and I saw it actually, <laughs> as I, I as actually describing it here, is at some point uh, the blade quit cutting and it was starting to grind, and you could actually see fine grinding. It here's what I learned and I basically destroyed this hole cutter learning and maybe it'll save anybody else the uh, problem that I learned the, the gullets of the saw loaded up on me and once the gullets loaded up of course now now we're grinding we're not cutting anymore uh, does Charlie pay attention to this no Charlie just uh, hey let's throw some more oil on it let's not stop and look at it Let's uh, a little more love and let's keep uh, putting some pressure on it. And uh, at some point here, 
I end up uh, actually breaking a tooth off of the cutter as I uh, continually forced it like a dumb boy. Um, I'm good for doing stuff like this. Um, <laughs> not paying attention and really looking at what was occurring. Uh, so let's see if I shut the drill off now. Um, as you can see, well, we're right up out of the screen, but if you saw as we were going up, the, the, the tool was loaded up with chips. And, uh, yeah, I can brush all I want there, Charlie, but you're not going to help it. Um, it was cutting, and uh, I'm still not paying attention to what's, what's gone on. And uh, I'm chatting with you guys, and I think, uh, I think I'm looking for the tooth that I knocked off of it right there, to be honest with you. But hey, come on, let's, uh, let's go back and beat the tool up some more, you fool. So, fire it back up, and uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get started again with, uh, with cutting with this same broken tool. Yep, here I go. Um, uh, I should fast forward this. Um, but, yeah, let's go down. Let's uh, punish the tool some more. Uh, boy, it's, it's, it's actually sad for me to watch this and, and claim what a dummy. It does start to, uh, since the gullets are clean, even though it's missing a tooth, as you can see, it's starting to cut again. And uh, I'm just beating the Jesus out of this thing. So um, I'm going to stop chatting here and uh, we'll um, take a, a peek at the tool. Well, honest disclosure, I've sped this up 16 times speed to show you another two minutes of brutal. Okay, I'm done with my torture of the tool with my stupidness. And I'm telling you, yeah, I see. Gr you can see the grinding uh, leftovers. Yeah. So I'm talking about the fact that uh, it looks like Leon Spinks now. It's missing a tooth. Um, so, and hey, guess what? It's hot. <laughs> so let's get a rag and take a look at the. Uh, damage that I created on this tool. I think I'm going to spin it around in front of the camera here for you. So I'm looking at a small screen here but it's you can see where the tooth has been knocked out of it and uh, I've mangled the heck out of it. So lesson learned keep the gullets clean speeds and feeds of course but uh, if the gullets load up the tool is not going to cut remember that Charlie so here is a picture of the electronic microscope I got from Banggood and I thought I was videoing and trying to show you the tooth profiles and uh, I didn't do that. So and there's the damaged tooth. And there again is the unit I've used. Been very, very happy with it. Okay, well, now that I've learned something, I went back and got the next size up and uh, started using it. As you can see, I've punched a hole. I thought I was videoing and I was taking photographs. It uh, was very successful. Okay. Uh, feeds and speeds, of course. Now I, get the microphone uh, I fed it at the fine. slow speed and uh, made and sure that the gullet remained clean and ended up with a very, very nice hole. Just to show you what it looks now like. I went to a thinner piece of plate um, and again using the Got same a bit of a razor edge. hole cutter. Uh, popped a hole in but, very, uh, very simply, much quicker since the, the material was thinner. Not else. as much issue of the gullets uh, filling up on it. So with well, that, I said, this. let's I uh, go to the larger uh, unit. It's about two and a half in inch uh, diameter. Stick. Um, again, the and, feed and uh, speed on the pilot drill. Um, I had to make a switch out, get speed up. up, and then get back uh, down. So, uh, and uh, the success of the hole was very, very simple to drill. 
and uh, again it's just monitoring the gullets uh, if they start to fill up but uh, it was a successful cut and uh, a good tool So a little slow for the pilot, actually, since I can do this with a flip of a lever, <laughs> oh, my drill press motor wants to be finicky now, come on. Only when you film. Well, it didn't like going through the, uh, the pilot drill, didn't like going through the stainless, can understand that, but uh, they say they're good for wood, so let's try it in some wood. You can see the gullets, gullets are filled up, hence it's not going to cut. So, you got to keep cleaning the gullets. So let's try Mr. Pete's uh, trick he showed today. And let's take and allow the gullets to clear with the some clearance on the side. Let's see how she cuts. That cuts well. It's a little. This plywood's deeper than the uh, than the uh, depth of the tool. But uh, Mr. Pete's uh, letting the gullets clear certainly helps. You may have to try that on a piece of plate now. Let's. Uh, I'll bring a piece of plate over. Okay, got a piece of steel plate in there. I'm going to slow it down. The gullets can clear on the back side there, so let's see how it does.
Well, Mr. Pete's uh, thought of letting the back open a little bit to allow it to clear chips definitely helps. But uh, ended up with a round slug. And if that's what you want to get is a round slug, that works out pretty well. But if you're trying to punch a hole in the middle of a piece of plate someplace like we've done, then that's uh, not, it's not so bueno. Um, definitely have to uh, maintain the gullets. But all in all, um, tool cuts pretty well. Here's a piece of uh, 65 thousandths uh, mild steel. It did fine. Not a lot of, not a lot of pressure there. I didn't want to get it pushing down where one tooth would grab and rip the whole part out of there. But uh, cut a nice hole there in a, actually a non-level piece, non-flat piece. Hello everybody. Now well, if you made it this far, thank you. And uh, I got to hold my hand up. Another dunce issue. I just did a full recording that I'm going to do right now without the microphone on. So let's uh, go at it again. First off, thanks for hanging on this long. Um, this tool, it's not a high dollar tool. Um, it is serviceable. And, and uh, as you can see, the expense is not great for the amount of tooling that you get um, compared to a hole saw uh, assembly of the same um, Diameters, uh, I think it's much less uh, in dollars. Um, it's really specific to your own work in your own shop and what you might use it for. Um, but again, I think the value is there. The, uh, part of my interest in ordering this tool from uh, Banggood to show you was, as you know, I'm rebuilding a Yancey, Yancey, excuse me, Yancey mag drill. And... Uh, I'm looking at using this in the uh, Yancey mag drill. And for uh, a little kick, since you guys hung on, here's a couple of photos uh, picking up the taper of a Morse Taper 33 and then machining the Morse Taper 33 and then making a slug uh, to fit in the uh, Morse 33 that will fit in the rotobroach. Excuse me, as the rotobroach. Um, end which fits in the mag drill. Um, in closing, I think there's good value in the tool. Uh, if you, I know if you watch me, you probably watch uh, uh, John Mills, Double Boost. He also did a review on this same product, and he had very good results. He's not stupid like me. He, <laughs> I can't help it. I, I messed up, buddies. But anyway, uh, don't do what I do. Don't do what I did. Um, Enough, enough uh, babbling here. I uh, appreciate you hanging in there. And uh, I will put links into the tool. And I hope you enjoyed. And we'll catch you again on another Screwy Tuesday. Thanks again.